When I joined our company, we were an insular company in an insular industry in an insular town. And I was pulled aside and told in no uncertain terms to stop associating with any known or suspected environmentalist. My environmental viewpoint was something that I really held very deeply from high school through college. And I really struggled with, did I really want to join an industrial company? Ten years ago, we issued the first corporate sustainability report. Today, that seems so mundane. Back then, there was a huge backlash against me personally, saying, how dare you criticize our own company? But I felt that if our company didn't get on the right side of this issue, we were on a slow ride into oblivion. This is the Plastics Research Sustainability Lab. What we're trying to do is take natural material and utilize that instead of petroleum for the plastics. Every time this project was about to be closed, we would find out somehow Bill would have an impact on it. When oil hit $100 a barrel, this became a very popular idea. We took advantage of a crisis to radically transform our company. A lot of companies were failing, money was very tight, and our own fortunes weren't very good. Our CEO and I made two big audacious bets. One was that we would be the fuel economy leader in the auto business, and two, that we'd be the technology leader. For over a hundred years, the internal combustion engine is what drove cars and trucks. But here we are today with all this new technology starting to come into the marketplace. Hybrids, plug-in hybrids, electric vehicles, biofuel vehicles. Now everybody's bought in, everybody gets it, and everybody's energized by finding new solutions to what are still big issues out there. If I look forward, which I love doing, there's the vehicle itself that will change dramatically. But then there's this whole notion of the vehicle's place in society that will change too. How are we going to move people in 50 cities around the globe with 10 million people or more? If we do nothing, the potential exists to have true global gridlock. Everything has to be tied together into a single network. This isn't science fiction. This is stuff that can be done. Fully autonomous vehicles, semi-autonomous features, fractional models, zip car models. But then there's the whole way we make the cars, too. Stuff that you never in your wildest dreams would think about becoming a car are now components of our car. This is an armrest made of 20% U.S. retired currency. We're using biodegradable materials, recycled materials. I really believe it's in his blood because Henry Ford wanted to do the same type of thing. He actually went and built a whole car out of soybeans to prove his point. I think we're at a very interesting inflection point in the whole history of industry. If one looks back to the Industrial Revolution, it brought a lot of great things, but it also brought with it a legacy of pollution, working conditions that weren't great. This is by far the best time to be an environmentalist in an industrial company because there are solutions available. There is a real parallel between what goes on in nature and what can go on in an ecosystem called a business. If you pull one lever, it has lots of consequences down the line. And you have to be helping affect positive change, creating a future that is going to make people's lives better.